Hello, and welcome to The Age Guide, Perspectives on the Aging Journey. We are here to be your personal guide and enhance your quality of life on the road ahead. Welcome to another episode of Age Guide's special podcast series celebrating our 50th anniversary. We're thrilled to have you join us for this milestone year. Our theme, The Great Reconnection, highlights the importance of social connections for older adults, fostering a sense of community and belonging. Scammers are getting craftier, and it's up to us to stay ahead. In this episode, we share a real-life story of a local senior who fell victim to a fake residential repair contractor. Listen in as she recounts her experience, how AgeGuide's funded partners and community helpers stepped in, and discover tips to protect yourself from fraud. Let's listen in. We are here today with someone who has been through a difficult experience with a scam. And she has agreed to meet with us today in her lovely home to talk about what that experience was like. So how about if we start with you sharing a little bit about yourself and your background before the scam story? Um, I'm a senior, obviously, and my husband did a lot of the work around the house. But he passed away. Just recently, Just, right? Yeah, a couple in, years um, ago. August of 2022, 20, I always have mm-hmm. to think of the year. And I was determined I was going to continue to do stuff myself. And then I realized I'm not capable of everything. And that's how I got taken because I was trusting people. And you, so you live in your own home, and you live in an unincorporated area, and you've got a lot of property around your house, and you have a large, a large home, a lot to take yeah. care of, yes. So how did you first come into contact with the home repair company that scammed you? I was outside pulling weeds down this long 200-foot driveway, and um, an SUV pulled in, and two very nice young men said, gee, did you, it looks like you need some seal coating done. Okay. And I said, no, I didn't think I really was ready to do seal coating. And I says, but if you know someone, I could use a handyman. And they right. said, what do you need done? And I said, well, I have a room that I need insulation and drywall put up in the ceiling. Okay. Well, let us take a look. And that's where it snowballed from there. Okay. They just found you were, and uh, just pulled up to your yard yeah. while you were working in your yard. Yes, they did. They get pretty crafty. and You know, I had someone, I, I couldn't understand why, because they really couldn't see me from the street, but what made them pull in here? And I have a sister-in-law who had an answer for it, and she says, well, you know, Sal's obituary and I said no 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 we did not put his obituary in the paper hmm. he said do not ever do that okay people check people that would pray and on you said, but it's still on the obituary site through the uh, funeral parlor oh right and she said she heard of people every day go in and look them up and they wait a little while and then they approach the people wow that's pretty sophisticated, and that is true. People will do that kind of thing when you're down any time that they have an angle that they can get in. So the, did you let them come in and take a look at the oh, room? they looked at it, and they were like, oh, we can do this. And that's where it all started. Okay. Oh, wow. So at what point did you realize that something was wrong? Um, I also... I gave them the money, which I should never have done, ahead of time to go and buy the supplies and everything. When I realized this was a total scam, they called me and he said, you know, we have a problem. Um, The concrete company, because it's summer, they're doing all the work in Chicago, so they cannot come out. I can't get the concrete until the end of September or October. And I said, well, then let's just forget about it. You know, give me my check back for the concrete. Yeah. Now, they still hadn't finished the the room or anything either, by the way. Um, Because there was an excuse for that. Were they doing a little work here? Were they coming regularly? Were you seeing them at all? You know, yes, I would see them, but they they didn't do the work. Okay. So they were really trying to ingratiate themselves and be really nice and kind and befriend you. And that's... 
that's really seems like a good thing when you're newly widowed and you're trying to figure things out and you meet some new friends who can be really helpful and it's really easy to yeah you know and you're determined to be able to do things and have things done um you want to be able to take care of your house yourself and yeah yeah. exactly sure Um, when i realized this was a total scam when I was, he was telling me about the concrete work. I said, "Well, give me the money back." And he goes, "Well, I already gave it to the concrete company." Why? Well, I'm thinking, you know. He said, "But if you can give me another check, I can have it delivered sooner." Oh, and that's no. when I was like, "Uh oh, that doesn't I've sound right." Taking, yeah. yeah. So then, what did you do? I called senior services and you asked them for help. I did. Okay, and I was so angry. Oh, I bet the man who runs the program from Milton Township—it's a salt program, Mm -hmm. the salt Um, program—and it's wonderful. He came over and he took the whole history. He was writing it down, and then he called a deputy, um, county deputy, to come over, sheriff, because I'm unincorporated I'm not oh, England. right right so the sheriff covers yeah. this area so one came over and then he I had to repeat it over again you tell he your wrote story everything down okay um then another police officer came and I'm glad for her she took a walk around my property okay. she said as a woman she knew what to look for oh okay and I'm like okay and she said well I am you know I'm a sheriff's deputy and I do carry a gun, but I'm still vulnerable. Right, we all as a are. woman, and mm-hmm. I think, wow, I never thought of it that way. So she looked around to see what I should be doing. Like I'm supposed to be putting in a ring doorbell. Okay, I just yeah. haven't done it yet. Okay, um, that's a good idea. You know, other safety other, features right, that you could do. I'm so far back. Right. Uh, yeah, and you're living here alone. So she, you've got right. some ideas of things that you can do to improve the safety right. of your home. And so that she was helpful. did that. And um, trying to think, the deputy that was assigned to my case. Mm-hmm. So you had a phone number for these people, right? Because you were talking to them yes. on the phone. Okay. And I turned it and any emails I had gotten or messages Good. from them, I turned that all over to the state's attorney's office. Okay. And were they able to get it's your money back for you or do anything yet. for you? Not yet. You're but still in process. Arrest, there's an arrest warrant out for the two men. Okay. And this Good. is the first time they've done this. Wow. Yeah. So they've been scamming people all over. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I guess, well, as I said, this is not going to make me not trust people. I, I can't be like that. Good. But it's sad that people have to stoop to this. Right. Yeah, that's unfortunate that there's these people out there that would take advantage of someone. And it can happen to anyone, no matter what age you are. But I think it's harder when we get to retirement and we're on a fixed income and, you know, you're trying to live independently as long as you can off of the resources that you have. So it becomes more of a challenge if you get involved with a scam like this. So that's why it's so hard. Um, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you faced in dealing with the fact that this situation happened? Well, for, you, first I was very embarrassed. Yeah, there's like an emotional you know, side to I it, was right? Like, oh, people are going to think I'm so stupid, and I, I just never dealing with these two people. They're good. Right. They're very good These at what con they artists. do. These are con artists, yes. And what bothered me the most was about religion. They're smart. And the one guy, I was sitting on the front porch mm-hmm. when they were going back and forth. Here right. And um, I was sitting there reading my Bible because I... I'm very religious. Okay. And, and they saw um, that? They did. And so they took that angle, and I yes, bet they, they used did. that against you, didn't they? Well, yeah. they said, oh, are you a Christian? I said, yes, I am. So they had a whole so story to go with it. And then the one start, he actually quoted scripture. Right, he knows that that's a way to get at people. These scam artists are so good at the, the things that they can do. And, yeah, you can't beat yourself up about that. You know what? I find myself, um, I do volunteer work, as I said. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I talk, I'll talk about it if somebody. Good. You can share your story yeah. to help yeah. other people. And I've had a few women who were like, oh my gosh, I live by myself. Right. And they're all like. This could easily happen to any yeah. of us. Yes. Even younger people who don't live by themselves get taken for scams. Yeah, they I do. mean, it happens to everybody. Yes, they do. Yes. But like I said, it's it's harder when you're retired and you're living by yourself. Oh, it's and, really, yeah. Yeah. The yeah, results you feel can be damaging. So vulnerable. And. Yeah. I, I, like sure. I said, I, I was a little frustrated, and, but I was scared Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. they knew where I lived. There's that angle of it too. And you don't know what else they're capable of. If they're capable of taking your money, what else are they they capable of? But luckily you've got the sheriff watching out for you. You've got some things you're going to do to improve the safety of your house. So what kind of advice would you give to other people? You said you share your story with others. And I think that's so impactful when you can tell other people what happened. happened. Right. And it's helpful for you to process through it, but it's also helpful for the other person. What do you tell them? Um, well, actually, I've told one lady who had somebody come to her door. Okay, she had a similar yeah. approach happen. Um, but she didn't. Li- she lived in Wheaton. Okay. So I don't know if it's the same people. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? But, but um, she said she was going to put outside surveillance. Okay. Because she was a lot older than me, and uh, she didn't have any family. Okay. So she was going to take idea. that. Okay, that. so you gave some suggestions for how she and could save. I told her, you know, don't stop trusting people. You still have you to be able to depend on your community. You have to be able to have other people help with things. You just have to be safe about it. And now you know that there's right. some questions you can ask, right? You know, not to write a big check up up front. And yeah. you know that you can always run things by either the Milton Township SALT folks mm-hmm. or senior services associates or the sheriff or police department. So that's good advice for people, too. Just yeah. check it out first, right? You've got people who are depending on you and waiting for you. and. Yeah. You've got people you can talk to about these things, too. If somebody exactly. comes to your driveway again, you could say, hey, what do you think of this? Yeah. Somebody showed up today. They're offering to do X, Y, Z. It's helpful to have those people in oh, your life. Yeah. And that, and I heard of a story from someone I've known since I started volunteering. We volunteer together on Fridays. Okay. And she goes, oh, my gosh. She had somebody come to her house after a bad storm. Yeah. And they left a brochure. Right. And as she was looking, she realized the pictures they said they took weren't her roof. Oh, it wasn't even her house. Wow. Yeah, because there are people who do that. Yeah. After a storm, they'll come out and they legitimately work with your insurance and do some home right. repairs. But you just don't know if uh-uh. you take the first person who comes to your door. You really have to check them out and do your research. Right. There's there's legitimate businesses yes, that do drive around and look for opportunities. Yeah. And the market is tight right now. And people yeah. are having trouble finding jobs. So they're going around looking. But there are those scammers out there, too. Yeah. And we have a lot of funded partners that we support at Age Guide around our eight county region. Then they can help with these kind of situations too, or direct you to the right places. So, I think some older adults might feel more comfortable calling up a social service type agency and asking for help. And some people are afraid: should I call? Is this something worthy of calling the police to check on? Or it's always fine to call Age Guide or to call one of our funded partners. Like you said, Senior Service Associates oh, was yeah. your first stop, and I think that's a comfortable spot for it people is. to go. I'll tell you why I thought of that, though. Um, Before I got married, I was living in Bloomingdale Township, and I worked for the township. Okay. And I worked for, I was assistant director of the Bloomingdale Township Senior Citizens. Oh, okay. And all of a sudden, I'm one of them. (laughs) How do you know? I would have told my seniors, no, no, don't fall for this, don't fall for that. And maybe that's why I was a little embarrassed. And yeah. I didn't think of it until just now. Yes. I used to advise them what to do and not to do. And he, 
Yeah. I didn't have anybody to advise me. But that's right. And that's why you I need forgot. to have those I connections. Was, yes. You forgot to take care of yourself yeah. and you need to reach out to others. And it's okay to ask other people what they think of a situation. Yeah. So good for you. You're just continuing to learn from this all the time. And I'm oh, so yeah, sorry that this something. happened. And yeah. I really hope that it, it gets resolved for you. But thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome. Thank you so much for listening. Before we go, we have a quick word from Age Guide featuring the Medicare Minute. Hello and welcome to your Medicare Minute. We are here with Val Guzman, our benefit access specialist here at Age Guide. Medicare fraud and scams are a huge issue where over $60 billion is lost every year. Uh, It's important to treat your Medicare number uh, in the same way that you would your uh, Social Security number or credit cards. Uh, You should only share your Medicare number with your doctor and never over the phone. Check your Medicare statements uh, and look out for any claims that uh, you don't recognize or that you suspect could be wrong. Uh, And when you do suspect something wrong, uh, make sure you report it right away. Uh, You can report potential Medicare fraud to the Senior Medicare Patrol Program. Uh, For more information about the SMP program, You can visit our fraud assistance page on ageguide.org, or you can call Ageguide at 800-528-2000. Thank you for listening to The Age Guide, Perspectives on the Aging Journey. We hope you learned something new on this podcast, because we all have a stake in promoting a high quality of life for people on their aging journey. Age Guide coordinates and administers many services for older adults in Northeastern Illinois. We serve DuPage, Grundy, Kane, Kankakee, Kendall, Lake, McHenry, and Will Counties. Our specially trained professionals are available to answer questions and connect you with local service providers and resources. If you are interested in these services or want to learn more, go to our website at hguide.org. Call our offices at 630-293-5990. Please follow our podcast so when we post our monthly podcast, you are notified on your streaming account. Thank you, and we will see you next time on The Age Guide, Perspectives on the Aging Journey.